Okay, this will be part one um, of the clippering part of a pet. This is a puppy that um, has only been groomed once before. So with an adult dog that's used to being groomed, we'll start at the head. But with a puppy, because they are not necessarily seasoned to clippers, we'll start at the butt. So here we go. And this is with a 10 blade, and we'll be going against the grain. Good girl. And we'll lift the leg, get underneath here. Just watch you don't hit the edge of the wall dog. If you're working on a male dog, you've got the tusks and penis to work around. And if you this video, I'll try and do this this way. I normally flip them around. A little piece sticking out here, girl. Okay. Just get that off. There, I'll clean. Okay, now we'll see if we can get her to. I'm just going to move this a little bit. I'm going to stand up against the wall like this. Good girl so that you can get uh, the tummy area. Here we go. Good job. Good job. so that the tummy is nice and clean. I don't know if you can really see that, but... Okay, now that she's used to the clipper, we'll um, turn you guys a little bit, and we're just going to change the angle of this slightly. And so this video can pertain to both sexes. We're also going to shave the butt of an intact male. So we'll go on either side of the rectum to make a nice clean sweep. So now from about an inch above the hawk you can go against the grain. And you're going to work just very gently into the testicles and then just reach yourself down the side of the testicle very gently so that you expose. Hopefully that can be seen. I'm going to try and hold his leg this way again. Just go above the hock. I think you can sort of see. And again, you come into the testicle nice and slow. Just sort of go in to catch the fur. Then just go around the testicle so that you're exposing it. For the underneath part, uh, we'll just slightly move the camera like this. Again, up against the wall, if you can do that, makes it nice. You can just go against the grain above the penis to clean that area out. And then you can go on either side and up the penis on either side. And then just uh, carefully work around the end of it.
and then just get uh, come up to the testicles at the back. Hopefully my arm isn't totally in the way here. I'm really sorry. It's kind of awkward. And then while you've got them up, you can just work around the inside of the testicles very gently. Okay, and that's all. All cleaned off now. We just have the inside of the back legs to do, which we'll go around this way for again. Just turn it this way, good. And you can lift the leg up and just uh, clean that area out. Underneath. Of course, the same to the other side. And again, well, maybe I can do this and you can actually see this way. I'm not sure. Hopefully, this is somewhat helpful. But now you've got a nice clean butt, and uh, your private area is all cleaned out. So, there you have boy and girl. Okay, so to start with this fuzzy head, we're just going to lift up an ear and shave right over top of the ear to start. And just down the cheeks a bit. And bear in mind, this is a puppy that's only ever been clippered once, so she's not going to be a seasoned pro like an adult would be here. What you doing, eh? So we come just about a quarter inch, uh, you can see the eye there, so about a quarter inch behind the eye is your trim line. And bear in mind, this is for, for a pet, not for a pet groom, not a show groom. the same on the other side. white under the chin, too, too short, just going against the grain to sort of get a line for the beard. Just to get a nice, uh, from the quarter inch of the eye, just to get a nice line on both sides. And just even this up underneath. <clears throat> and then the rest of this white we're going to take the 10 blade with the grain. Okay, on the top of the head. We'll go with the grain for the most part here, but we will carve out the eyebrows with the reverse 10. And always clip her a dry coat. And then we're going to shape that eyebrow around that bone. Stay. Stay. Good job. Can we make the other side to match as best we can? Mm -hmm. Stay. Now when you go between the eyes, you do have to kind of take the eyebrows back and you just want to clean out between the eyes to the stop. And the stop is a point between the two eyes and you don't want to shave the 
top of the nose because then you destroy the black mask and the overlay. So you just simply stop and the rest of this we'll trim with scissors in our step two video of finishing and trimming. This video is just going to be the clippering portion. Stay. So once the eyebrows are shaped, and you can see that now, we're just going to run that 10 blade just to blend in with where we've gone reverse into the ears. And I think I'm going to noose her for the ears. Sorry, it's getting a little farther away here for you guys. But again, you're going to run the 10 blade with the grain. So we're going to take that 10 blade over the top of the ears. And then we're going to do the reverse side of the ears. And always take your blade towards the outer edge. Do not work from the outer edge in. So more from the inside of the ear flap to the outside edge so that you're, there's no chance of nicking that ear. And we'll worry about the edge of the ear later and uh, that'll be trimmed with scissors. Okay, then we're gonna turn the other way face the camera and again just working the top of that ear and we just had a clipper blade jam so we'll just pause for a moment okay I'll try this again So just over the opening of the ear, those will have to be tweezed later to get the hair out of the inside of the ear. Then you can just hold the head and do a nice clean sweep to the ear on the side of the temple there if it needs it, if it needs it. And now we're going to switch um, to an eight and a half size blade to do the body coat so that we're not as short. And we can take you out of this now. There you go. So we can start under the chin and work from that white. So we're going to do between the white only with the clipper. So white to white. Just go over it to make sure it's nice and smooth. Then you can hold these ears back. I'm just going to switch the angle of this camera a little bit. So you're just going to sort of hold the ears forward and just bend that neck so that you've got a nice taut skin. And just run that eight and a half blade from uh, the top of the head down the neck. Bring that ear, pull it forward. Nice. Do the same on the other side.
This coat is very thick. Okay, so now we'll turn our little model around here and she can sit or stand. And we'll just work this uh, little black coat, which is the easy part. This is just straight clippering. Just let the blade, don't force the clipper, just let the blade work through the coat. Stand up, girl. That's I'm just going to work along the side here a bit. Look back down the back of the leg, but just stop about three fingers above the hawk. We'll wor worry about fine tuning our sideline, and at the moment, we're just trying to get the bulk of this coat off this dog. So we're just going again, always with the green. Turn it around so you can see this side as well. Good job. I will actually switch back to the 10 blade to do the tail. It's really a 10 and an 8.5 is, is pretty good for this, this breed. So again, going with the grain on the tail, you can do the underside against the grain. Always leave just a little tuft on the end so that you have something to hold the tail up with to do the underside before cutting that off. As a little handle, just to get a nice finish to this little schnauzer butt. Gotta love a schnauzer butt. And now we can cut the end off of this, the fur off the end of this tail. Again with a tin blade. Okay, and we've already done that, but it needs to be fine tuned. Because we didn't uh, finish it with precision. That's going to come into a nice spot. So, for um, shaping of the sides, this is where you see a lot of errors with grooming um, into cocker skirt lines or way too high or whatever, whatever. And again, this is for a pet groom, so we're going to come, the elbow is here, we're going to come about a half an inch or so above the elbow with your eight and a half blade. And then you're just going to pull that front leg forward and clean out the front part of that elbow. We're going to mark the back leg. You can feel there's a flap of skin here. We want to keep about a quarter inch above that flap of skin so that we don't lose our underline. And we're going to hold this leg forward going to go a little bit against the grain here just to stand up girl. Now 
maybe this wasn't the best model to use. Because we do want to make sure that this is an underline, not a skirt. And she's really not cooperating. This is maybe not, uh, as I said, not the best model. So we're going to do the same on the other side. So now for the back legs, um, I'm just going to do the thigh part of the leg with the eight and a half, and um, we're going to shape the um, outline, the trim line with a with ten with the green without trying to make too much of a deviation in length, but it's just it carves through a little bit better to, to make the line. So from a quarter inch, we got a quarter inch above that flap of skin there. And we're just going to work down and then circle around to about an inch above that. And we're, I'm just going to go over this again to make sure that we got that nice line there. More like a schnauzer. Okay, we'll do the same on the other side. Again, it's awkward for the camera to pick this up, but you get the drift. I'm sorry if my arm was in front of the camera. I'm not used to doing this in front of the camera. It's kind of awkward. One other thing we're going to do with this number 10 blade is we're going to do the pads of the feet. We're going to take the bulk of the hair out of the pads of these feet. <clears throat> it's uh, just a little quick, quick swipe on all feet just to get that excess hair out. <clears throat> this dog doesn't have any knots or anything like that in the feet, so sometimes. Um, you know, you can actually get mats in the, the in between the pads, which is not not good. So as far as this underarm is concerned, and again, this is a pat, not a show. So we are going to. Um, just be very careful as you come down here. You don't want to cut that layer of skin. Then you just gently want to shape it out and clear this fur out from underneath this underarm because it is a prime area for matting and you just want to keep it clean. There is a little mat under here, so that's why it's boned up here for a second there. And we'll do the same on the other side. Stay. So again, just very, very gently. That you can knit them very easily if you're not careful in this area because the skin is very uh, soft and supple and loose to a point. Again, doing a little bit of digging here because there's a little mat under here.
but it just gives you for a nice clean side. So you've got about an inch above the elbow, or sorry, half an inch above the elbow, clear out that um, underarm a quarter inch above the flap of skin, and then you basically just join those two points with your underline, not a skirt. Underline. And then you've got your back leg feathered shaping, so this is going to be now bathed and scissored. And we've got the same on both sides. And just to fine tune that line. So that concludes the clipper part. Um, obviously. Um, obviously, we've got nails and years to do. Um, so for the nails, I like to use a guillotine style nail clipper. That's my personal preference. Some people prefer other styles. And you want to take the nails back to just before the quick. Um, some people grind them, some people use different styles, clippers, but I find the guillotine works well for myself. The dogs are used to it. And like I said, this, this, this puppy, this is only her second grooming, so she is not, uh, not really seasoned to this, but you, you always can't have a 100% perfect model, but she's doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. She says, why are you recording this, huh? Sheesh, didn't know. No. Nope. And that's that. And then we'll do the ears. Um, so we've got uh, locking hemostats for that. And some sort of ear powder. You can use the R7 um, ear powder. This just takes uh, any oils out of the fur and allows you to get a proper grip on it. So you just need a little bit of powder. You don't need a great big thing like that, but I'm doing multiple dogs. So I get the giant size and then you just pluck um, the fur out of these ears to clean that out because schnauzers must have the ear, the ear hair removed. Even if you do it every other time, um, it's got to be done at least twice a year, preferably four times. She's going to lie down for the job. You can take your fingers and just pull it out too. And then sometimes you get the black hairs and the black hairs are a little more sensitive to pull out. But that's a much better looking ear now than we had to start with, isn't it? Yes. She says, oh, brother. I don't know, Twacy. Hmm? What you doing? So I don't actually lock the hemostats, but just uh, grip and pull. As you can see, she's really not fussing too much. If you miss, they, they definitely let you know and you pinch the ear. And then I'm just going to take again my fingers to clean out some of this finer stuff. Going down so low, girl. Getting out of the camera. And again, that's a much cleaner ear than what we started with. But the air circulates. So that'll be a wrap on the clippering part. So everything else is basically going to be done by the scissors. And uh, we'll, we'll do part two. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.